It's Roxanne here with Baker's Acres Homestead, and I'm so glad that you could come hang out with me today. So today I am going to be potting up some of my starts that I started <clears throat> back in about mid-January, and um, I just wanted to take you guys along with me and kind of show you what I'm doing and explain like why I'm doing it and stuff. So um, back in mid-January, I started a lot of my cold weather crops that can handle um, some of the cold and a little bit of frost. Um, they can usually handle, you know, like a mild frost, like down to about um, 25 degrees or so, but you get down in the like really low 20s and the, um, the teens and they start kind of suffering and they don't fare too well anymore but they can handle some cold and some frost so um i started these back in mid-january and um i started them let me just show you over here i started them in these two inch um pot trays there and um my hopes was that i would be able to plant them in those, like in the idea of those bigger pot trays, is to um, start your seeds in that, and then hopefully by the time they get big enough, you could plant them in the ground, and they would have the nutrients and stuff that they need to grow. Well, our weather hasn't been <laughs> cooperating, and we looked at the 10-day 10, 10 forecast, and we're still going to get some more nights um, next week that are down in the teens. So if I went ahead and put these out in my garden, they wouldn't do too well, especially as um, small as they are still. Um, but um, you can also, with these pots, pot them up into a bigger size as well if you can't get them into the ground um, soon enough. But like I was saying, my hopes for these was that I'd be able to plant them in these and not have to pot them up. I would be able to go ahead and um, put them in the ground when they got big enough with some compost and, and stuff that they could um, eat on while they were getting established. And I mean, the compost would feed them too while they're, while they're growing as well. But um, like I said, our weather is not cooperating and I can't put them in the ground yet because um, a couple of days this week and then next week it's supposed to get cold um, down into the teens at night and that wouldn't be too good for them. So today I'm going to pot them up into some bigger pots with some potting soil that will feed them and give them the nutrients that they need until I can put them out into the garden. Mm, the, um, most of the time, um, your seed starting soil will not have nutrients in it that's feeding that plant. The reason being is the idea with seed starting soil is you plant them in that in hopes to either transplant them out into the garden or pop them up into some potty soil that will feed them because your, um, starts get their nutrients from the seed that they grow from and once they use that all up about the time that they get their first set of um true leaves then um you need to pot them up into a potting soil mix that has nutrients for them to feed on or put them in your garden like i said before where they can excuse me, feed off of the nutrients in the soil and you can add compost and stuff to help feed them as well. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm getting ready to do today because um, let me show you some of these plants. They, I haven't potted them up and I probably should have a while ago because a lot of them have had their first set of true leaves for a little while and some of them are actually starting to get their second set of true leaves. And um, some of my leaves are starting to curl and turn yellow. So let me show you here what I'm talking about. 
see these are um, some of my Brussels sprouts and if you look if you can see they're starting to get like spots on their leaves and turn yellow and getting this like curl and stuff to them and these here my um, Brussels sprouts here those are the ones that look the worst um, some of the other ones I mean they've got some leaf curl here on some of these but these don't look um, quite as bad as those do down there and um, so yeah I'm just getting ready to pot up some of those um, I may not get all of them done today but I'm gonna try to do um, quite a few of them today and then hopefully what I don't finish today I'll get to finish tomorrow so uh, yeah I'll show you guys what I'm doing as I go along so before I get started, I want to share with you guys what um, potting soil we are using this year. And I haven't ever used this one before, um, so I really can't give like any kind of review or anything on it. But I mean, um, reading other reviews about it and um, looking at the ingredients and different things about it and stuff, it seems like it's going to be a very good one. So it's called Bush Doctor um, Coco Loco. So this, um, this um, potting, so potting soil mix has um, cocoa corn in it. Let me just turn this around so I can show you um, some of the stuff on the back here so it has coco core in it and um, one of the properties of um, coco core is like here it tells you that um, as you as you trek through a tropical jungle your steps remain light and buoyant never soggy the rainforest floor is remarkably deep with um, layers of exotic coconut palm humus. It is cool and damp for several inches. Um, hold the riches in your hands. Feel the soft, silky texture. It's the perfect medium for cultivating plants. Okay, um, it's this part here that tells you um, the core in Coco Loco behaves like little sponges making water available as needed by the plants. Coco Loco potting mix has the ability to hold more than its weight in water while still draining well. Lower humidity reduces the possibility of attracting mold and root rot as well as leaving insects less likely to bother your potted plants. So um, with the cocoa cork in there, it's able to hold more moisture and it makes it um, easier to water because it's holding that moisture and it's releasing it as the plants need it. So you're not having to water as often. And um, also with the coconut core, it's a resource that is naturally renewable because it's a byproduct of um, the coconut. It's the coconut husks from the coconut. So it's just a byproduct of harvesting coconuts and it naturally renews itself. It, the, it's a fruit grown on a tree. So, I mean, it's naturally renewing all the time. So it's a, it's a um, very renewable product that's just a byproduct of already um, harvesting those coconuts. So it's a very good resource to use. And um, let me just share with you the ingredients in this. And this is another reason why we um, really like or um, really liked the um, idea of trying this um, this um, potting soil mix for this year. It has composted forest humus, coco core, perlite, earth warm castings, fossilized bat guano, which if you don't know what that is, that's just essentially um, bat poo. Norwegian kelp meal, oyster shell, and dolomite lime for adjusting the pH in your soil. So it's got some really good stuff in there that's going to really help um, boost those plants and give them a really good start. Um, this right here says 
Um, why do plants go nuts for Coco Loco? It's the best bat guano. It's the bat guano. For centuries, bat guano has been known to be a beneficial soil amendment, which has a powerful effect on all kinds of plants. Add earthworm castings, and you have a rich mix full of regenerative material that plants thrive on. So, um, that being said about this soil, um, like I said, we haven't ever used it before, um, so I can't give, like, a real review about it or say that it's oh is this a great thing or whatever because I haven't used it before but based on the stuff that I'm reading and the stuff that's in it and stuff that other people have said about it and stuff it seems like it's going to be a really good soil so I'm really excited to try it this year and once I do try it this year I can give you a better review about it and let you know how it goes so um, let me just show you what it looks like inside this bag. It looks really nice and luscious and it's a beautiful looking soil. It's so black and fluffy and you can squeeze it and you can just feel the moisture um, come out of it. So it looks really nice and feels really good. It looks like a really, really good soil to use. So I'm really excited about it. I am um, excited to use it and see how it goes. And um, hopefully it's good. It's as good as I'm hoping it's going to be. But it really does seem like a really good soil. So I'm pretty, um, pretty excited to use it and see, see how well it really works. Okay, so what I've done here first is I got a bucket here and then I took some of my soil and I put it in this bucket and I've added some um, warm water to it and two reasons um, one I um, you want to add moisture to your soil that way um, when you plant your plants in it it's already good and um, wet that the plants will be able to suck up that um, water when you plant them in there so that they can get good and established in their new pots and um, new soil and they can um, start sucking up those nutrients and stuff out of the out of the soil um, to grow stronger and two this potting mix bag was actually outside and it has been very cold outside and the soil inside was very cold. There was actually some parts of it that were frozen together in um, clumps that I had to break up. And so I wanted to warm up the soil so that my plants are not going into frozen soil and I shock them with the cold. So I wanted to warm it up and I wanted to get it wet. So. Um, I put it in this bucket and added some nice warm water to accomplish both of those things. And now I'm going to start putting a small layer of soil into each one of these cups. 